Some artists are born to buck trends, whether it's in the realms of jazz, rock, electronica, or hip-hop itself, there's always going to be outliers that move in ways that seem completely incomprehensible to most people. But for those that get it, they'll really get it, and embed it into their hearts and minds with the knowledge that this music is theirs. Ever since he came out of the gate swinging with the rambunctious odd future wolf gang Kill em All, LA's Earl Sweatshirt has always eared towards the side of confronting hip hop's norms rather than abiding by them, amassing no shortage of diehard fans along the way. Notoriously removed off YouTube on countless occasions for his gore laden visuals, Earl, the title track from the debut mixtape of the same name, quickly marked the teenaged MC as an excited prospect. Somewhere between foul-mouthed delinquent and a prodigious nihilistic poet with technical ability beyond his ears. The project quickly elevated the young MC to the status to the abrasive group's greatest wordsmith. But just as the taboo-shattering collective's stars started burning bright, enough that the entire world was forced to take notice, Tebe was obscured from public view. Concerned for his welfare and the wayward path that he was heading down, Earl's mother, Cheryl Harris, a decorated professor in civil rights and civil liberties, forcibly isolated him from the group by shipping him off to a strict Samoan boarding school. Upon returning, Earl's worldview had been unalterably changed. Gone were the sophomoric sexual violence jokes and gross out punchlines. In their place, a young man that seemed to have increasingly less use for his outmoded mindset. In a GQ Q&A that coincided with the release of his 2013 debut album Doris, Earl saw no way to reconcile the man he'd since became with the boy that he once was when he first appeared in the public eye. I'm grown now. I was a little ass kid in 2009. I figured out, well, not figured out, that's ridiculous, not in some pretentious way, just as a result of time. Defining the peril lyricism of the past as my way of screaming because I don't yell, his first post Samoa project still bears shreds of resemblance to the brash and mischievous teenager that he once was, but offsets the edginess with frank discussion on addiction, loss, and the persistent tug of depression that had haunted him for his entire life. At this stage, Tebe still operated within the spectrum of the mainstream in the same way that Tyler the Creator does to this day. Their music looked at hip-hop from an unorthodox viewpoint, but was still palatable enough that it could resonate with a passive ear that encountered it. But from March 23rd, 2015, and the release of I Don't Like I Don't Go Outside, onwards, Earl had been unafraid to alienate anyone that came along looking for an agreeable listening experience and isn't willing to go along for the ride with them. Through the masterful, soul-exercising 10-minute journey that is solace, to the fragmented ruminations of grief, hope, and everything in between that can be found on the thrilling some rap songs, Tebe has confounded the masses while keeping his heart and fans entranced. Then, in the heady mix of sonic discordance and the lyrical profundities that made up Fita Clay arrived in November, it marked the point where some listeners officially revoked their interest in the 25-year-old once and for all, some tweets reacting to it in Earl in general after its release. I'm officially retiring from bumping new Earl sweatshirt music ever again. That man is finished. He's f***ing horrendous. Keep hyping that trash. Doris was a good time, proclaimed one particularly fury Twitter user to the tune of over 200 likes. Consisting on offbeat textures and meandering flows, Fida Clay is a million miles away from his debut studio album and his purposeful renunciation of anything that's even slightly comparable to what's occurring in hip-hop's chart-friendly sphere has lost him no shortage of casual fans, and this can be charted in brass tracks. Upon its release, Doris enjoyed considerable showing on the charts, peaking at number 5 on the Billboard 200. Now, six years later, the lo-fi offering that is Fida Clay's reached its highest height 102 a full 15 days after it was released. But where other artists would sound the horn and look to rectify this as quick as possible, this plummet down the charts is all part of Earl Sweatshirt's agenda. Revealed by certain sectors of the hip-hop consumer base, but universally praised by critics, what other people would see as a commercial failure is what Earl now sees as a creative triumph and one that allows him to take control of who he is and where he's headed. Freed from his Columbia Records deal, a January 2019 profile with Pitchfork saw Earl divulge that, I'm excited to be free because I can do riskier sh 
left to impotently rage against the label that had infamously fumbled the rollout to his second album in 2015, Fida Clay marks complete and utter liberation, and for Earl, it means heading back to the carefree creativity that only comes from knowing the world isn't watching you. It's like that point when you were 16. It wasn't to chart. I was thinking about the art of it. That type of awareness lets you do the experimental sh that you want to do. Between these two modes, quick rhyming technician and experimentalist, a conversation is taking place about who Tebe Naruto is and what Earl Sweatshirt represents. On Feet of Clay, what Earl Sweatshirt represents is an artist that's meeting his own specifications without having to worry about any interjection. From the non-existent production values of the East video to his decision to incorporate features from fellow subversive and relative unknowns such as Makami, Liv E, and Mavi, the EP has a feeling of low stakes that you'd never expect to arise in the work of an artist that could be a household name by now if you wanted. Whether it was at Odd Future's cultural peak around the OF Tape Volume 2, or guesting alongside Danny Brown, Absol, and Kendrick Lamar on Really Doe, there's been no shortage of windows in which Earl could have consolidated the hype and made strides towards increasing his mainstream profile. But while some artists find the ensuing fame and flashbulb-filled lifestyle that comes with being a rapper just as, if not more alluring, than the act of artistic expression, Earl sees no value in the recognition of hip-hop stardom. And in the 2015 Q&A with Ferrari Shepard, Tebe seemed eager to dismantle his own notoriety once and for all. Fame is a stressful and dehumanizing pedestal, because that's what it was for me. I didn't get the privilege of having a choice when it came to the ascent of my name and likeness in music. Naturally, I was upset. Disheartened as he was by being unceremoniously thrust into the public eye, Earl may not take any pleasure from the visibility that comes with hip-hop success, but had the self-awareness to release that he had a role to play, and in typical fashion, it's one that's more in line with that of backpacker MCs, of the bygone eras, or even his own father, South African poet and activist, Kier Pest Kyokit Steel, than any commercially-minded run-of-the-mill rapper. My ultimate job purpose is to teach. I'm blessed to have a platform that allows me to speak to many at once. I recognize that I can make consciousness a tangible thing for young people. So, while some rap songs know where to go saw Earl lament over the weight that had been exacted on his young shoulders as he spit, you gave me a coast, you went and gave me a cape, but that never gave me no hope. Earl now accepts the role that he has in pushing hip hop forward through not only his ability, but the innate intimacy of his music. He's just committed to doing it on his own terms. Intent on reshaping our understanding of who Earl is and what bracket his music should be filed under with each passing project, Earl isn't too much making a concerted effort to outrun his past self as he's actively shunning the notion that as an elite rhymer, he should be striving to reach the top of the game. Instead, he sabotaged his mainstream appeal in order to move unencumbered and allow the music to find its way to receptive ears rather than ones that are looking for him to meet any cultural criteria. Across I Don't Like, to some rap songs, and the recent feat of clay, Earl has thrown caution to the wind when it comes to creating and found that the abstract, while less marketable, is what compels him to keep picking up the pen. And in the conversation with his mother Cheryl Harris at MLCA, Earl all confirmed that any pressure to clamper up the chart or responding to outdated perceptions of who he is or was have been erased in favor of using rap as his conduit to make sense of it all. Responding to a fan's question about his writing process, Earl had the following to say. It's for sale. You can obviously go buy it if you feel that, but its goal when it comes out isn't to sell the most. It's to get it off, you know what I'm saying? Figure it out. Rap helps me figure out life. It's just a medium that I figure out life through, you know what I'm saying? So for me, that's the joy. And when you strip away the glitz, the glamour, the accolades, or the platinum plaques, and the incessant noise of the industry machine, isn't that what hip-hop has always been about? This has been a Hip-Hop Madness original. Make sure to stay tuned and stay up to date with everything we got going on by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. Oh, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Hip-Hop Madness and join the movement.